So thank you, Deepika. Thank you, Indus University, Jama Bharti, for giving me this. Uh, I, I appreciate that you have given me this opportunity to speak on this very important subject. So you know, I'll I'll speak as I always speak. You know, uh, kind of extemporary. I do have like a couple of points that I've noted that I must speak. Uh, so the thing is, a lot of what I would say would you know like blow your mind. So my handle is Puneet underscore Sahani. my first name underscore my last name and you know from there you can also get the handle of our seva account so because they made a lot of fake accounts so whatever we say you know if you ask and say we'll actually give you evidence for what i'm saying a lot of things would really be unbelievable for you to hear and thank you a lot to like a uh, stupendous response so i've heard like this is one of the most uh, what do you say uh, enthusiastic participation in a talk so i really appreciate the others who have joined in to listen as well so you know let's start you know uh, so we are going to talk about history and you know sikh history right so why should we study history in the first place so this is what i'm going to try to do it's not just like you know some facts that you mug up and you know repeat in like an exam but it's like everything would be from first principles where you engage with the world right so i think is history like an ideology like people use what they have done like the marxists have done or is it a science so what is the difference between an ideology and a science for the first place right so we as a human beings we are living a world and we are trying to make sense of it so why has happened so ideology is something that offers an explanation why this is happening so marxism is an ideology but it is not a science because it is not able to predict actually wherever marxism has gone it has basically destroyed the society so the utopia never came that's why we'll put it in the uh, category of an ideology not a science but what is science is it just doesn't explain it is also able to predict that's why physics is a science i would say history is also a science if you study it from the perspective of you know like what types of constraints and what types of incentives you put in a system and what kind of outcomes you'll get so i so my case would be like we're studying history and we'll study history from a scientific perspective right now the second question is okay history is so vast you know like europe is actually really fascinating india itself is so huge you know why 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 is it history and why this should interest to people who are like not punjabis or not sikhs for example i would say you know sikh interest uh, history like in our understanding of our freedom movement of who we are as indians is the the sikh communal politics that comes in like 1920s and it comes when muslim league politics come right and this akali dal like their earlier version was also called sikh league so sikh league became like this different parties anyways i think this is the most overlooked aspect of our historiography so we don't understand and to study this you know we will understand what is happening so you know like for example what was the muslim league demand you know uh, so uh, they say we are a separate nation and we are an equal nation so what does it mean like they were 25% so they were like you know like we can't be one nation you know like juda uh, gano komir so we cannot be like one nation together like we can't be all americans we can't all be british we are irreconcilable and barabar means like you know equal nation means okay we are 25 maybe like we want share of 50% right and these indian leaders were also trying to placate jina okay like you know you become the prime minister or whatever so if you look at like the sikh demand like nobody knows it's like they also start using the word poem in the 1920s now this is actually really fascinating because you know like the uh, guru gobind singh who basically makes a military order and you know he he is a master of languages from braj to sanskrit uh, to persian and when he talks about persian he just doesn't know like uh, the philology you know he talks about their deep mythology for example his celebrated letter to aurangzeb so if you read he never uses the word poem he uses like okay sometimes he says for hindu he uses dharma you know but for khalsa for example he always uses the word panth no panth is everybody understands in india he doesn't use the word qom but when the muslim league start using the word qom they these uh, sikh league also starts using the word qom now what they do is like those muslim leagues were 25% they were muslims were they were muslim league was making 50% share now if you look at the uh, sikhs were 15% in punjab 
less than 15 percent approximately if you look at what was master tara singh demand or this akali parties it was the same they were saying 30 percent share whatever is our population because of our historic importance or whatever give us double the share no you know the, the muslim league their problem was they said you know like uh, muslims are voting for congress they were like we want the muslim league always demand but we, uh, the muslim league is the sole representative now this anandpur sahib resolution we, you know which led to in uh, a lot of chaos in 80s nobody has read it it's sort of nonsense but one of the demands is also like this is the akali dal should be the sole representative of the sikhs why should that be the case for we are individuals we have an individual conscience we should decide who will represent us how can this is again a muslim league demand and you know it's such a foolish demand because if you look at punjab history before the, that's why they played this game of communalism to polarize society because congress at one time had more sikh mlas than akali dal so how can they make such a stupid claim and you know like again what was muslim league thing you know they would not get they would make direct action and you know they make khilafat uh, movement and gandhi ji would placate them okay you know like, you see same to same you know I, i i respect all the scholars who have written but nobody has actually seen it in history from this perspective so for example this akalis were actually one of the first ones to lead direct action and they were also like direct action all about religious things like we would capture gurdwaras and something and once they would succeed you know like the british government will work you know they would get 10000 people and you know people would die and they capture mahatma gandhi ji said you know oh, you, you know you, you have put british on the back foot you have won the first war of independence or something to that you know i'm saying so this is the you know like kind of nonsense so again what mahatma gandhi ji was saying to uh, khilafat andolan it was doing the same with the akalis and just like muslim league sometimes they would come together sometimes they would go out if you look at akali politics is the same you know when they have to form the government with uh, in punjab you know with the uh, with this uh, unionist party or muslim league they would go and tell like the muslims you know we are people like you we are farmers with you when they want a favor from the congress they go to the congress and they say you know uh, hindus and sikhs have roti beti ka rishta which can which is true you know we we share our daughters like we intermarry our daughters to each other like you know we give uh, the hand of a daughter to the other family and we also share food like no if you marry daughters into each other then there can be no so there is two so you know they would just like what jinnah would say like you know something to somebody to Mus- um, muslimly uh, to what this mullahs he would say something else in like to the british he would say something else the exact same thing this you know the sikh communal politics was doing and you know again you know like it's not just like this trivia it can also uh, you know make you understand so for example when pakistan happens in 1946 90% of muslims they vote for pakistan right and this is again like a very painful chapter of our history now there are some who try to hide it this is what our history has done now there are modern ones because some have pointed it out they try to whitewash it they say oh, only not 100% people are voting of course what kind of idiotic lo- uh, logic is it of course you know like uh, there are only people of a certain age who can vote and they're saying only people who had certain land who could vote but again this is a foolish logic because if you look at this yes the the mullahs had unleashed a movement they were saying like if you don't vote for pakistan or this muslim league you're not going to be muslims we are going to dissolve your marriages so this was going to affect people who didn't have land or who were poor not these people it it was going to affect less people who had land and you know who, who had like their own property and who were well off so if anything if you would have included people who didn't have land and couldn't vote then they would have voted probably even more so you know they try to hide it another but i would say look at it another perspective this was just one election in 1937 muslims had not voted like this for muslim league they had voted for congress if you also see when you unleash this genie so for example you know when they unleash this in 80s this terror in punjab now in 1989 if you look at the election punjab has uh, uh, what do you say 13 lok sabha seats so 10 were won by khalistanis again 90% so the sikhs if you put this communal charge if you set the same incentive and constraint and create the environment even the sikhs can turn as communal as muslims so 90% voted so 10 out of 13 is 90% and in the 10 two people who had won the election for lok sabha their qualification were they were the wife and the father of the killer of mrs gandhi this was this and they were not one uh, i think from uh, batinda and ropar you know uh, the ben singh's widow and uh, father had one so this was uh, uh, 
uh, you know the thing so that's why i think uh, it's it's very interesting um so let's go to like you know our you know three topics uh, let's see how much time we have so first is like abramization right so for example what is wrong in abramization by like again you know it's not just like we are there something wrong it's actually like abramic countries like uh, who are built on judeo prince uh, uh, what do you say judeo christian values like for example the western europe or america i am in america we want to live there so cultures don't live in a uh, vacuum they evolve with time what i mean with abramization is basically this idea of a single truth and this di- purging of diversity now this is actually a very painful thing this is wrong and if you look at christianity it has basically you know it has gone through very uh, painful stages and i recommend this great 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 book by uh, dear mai makallo uh, christianity of the last 3000 years so he goes before jesus christ what was the ground reality for the 1000 years why christianity came and how it evolved it's a great book anyways so christianity has gone through a very painful stages where it has basically reformed and now you can basically have the space for dissent now you have space for di- diversity so i am in a christian country like you know i can criticize the church i have the freedom to speak what so what this abramization i mean is not you know like to to throw muck on uh, christian people uh, by any stretch but this idea that this you know uh, uh, baptist or evangelical idea that was brought in it so you know they purge all diversity from the faith no so you see like if you do the british census you know there are so many sects within sikhism you know ram rai and some of these has basically you know who, who had also like uh, how do you say uh, not deceited but you know like started their rival uh, uh, challenges the uh, uh, authority of the gurus but they were even they were accepted as sikhs for example ram rayas right so the sikhism had so much diversity and that had basically like you know creating uh, the, so many books were being written it was a intellectually very stimulating time and what's fascinating is you know they ask you know so this question is being asked by people are you hindu or sikh and they don't know what that means so if you see you know like uh, so in 91 census 10 like dec- uh, in the next census from 81 40% people who had marked themselves as hindu marked themselves as sikhs uh and uh, no sorry 40% of sikhs in 91 census they had marked themselves as hindus so what does that mean you know like there was always a 50 50 chance like okay i whether i write myself a hindu or whether i write myself a sikh so why the british wanted to do this we will you know go in the last chapter you know how they colonized us and what was their incentives so basically you know they purged our diversity and you know this purging of diversity and this purging of dissent and creating this higher narrative that is very 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 high cost to take two examples you know and we take examples you know like let's 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 forget sikhism we take uh, examples from the muslim world right so if you look at the muslim world you know they talk about golden age and something like that and it is true there was a time where there was an islamic golden age right but if you look at this islamic golden age that never happened in hijaz or makkah and medina this happened basically in baghdad and you know around these and what happens in that time is very interesting because you have to understand why some things get better you have to focus what they get right and what they get right is these two cultures are mixing this persian and the arabic culture so mixing of culture is good that is again diversity then there is freedom to dissent so if you look at you know the greatest that they have produced is avicenna so if you look at what the king of that time is doing he is saying okay bring me like a rabbi and i want him to point out all the mistakes in quran and he says bring me like a molvi and i want him to point out all the mistakes in uh, the torah so you know there was freedom of uh, conscience freedom of speech you know freedom to dissent and that's why it came into being now <clears throat> so you know like and now when you see like for example uh, when you set a narrative which is basically like pakistan so now it's basically they have set a country on two nationhood and now nobody can question it so wherever they exca- excavate they find their hindu roots their buddhist roots buddhist roots they can't do it because the narrative has to win so they whitewash it so you know their language is punjabi you know everybody understands it it has to be whitewashed you know it reminds themselves of connection with like their larger punjabi culture 
put on urdu because they think you know urdu 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 actually means an army so this was the language of the army so what kind of people they have created is basically you know people completely disconnected with their culture people who have just like a higher narrative but their culture and higher narrative are in complete contradiction with each other and that is kind of what sgpc is doing in a way and that's why you know you have this mass conversion into christianity and khalis because you know these people that they have converted sgpc they are complete lunatics because they are not connected with their culture and you know you, they have just put theory in their mind that theory is not connected to the ground so uh, uh and you know like even and when we so we talked about like the muslim golden age now we move to the sikh golden age which is maharaja ranjit singh's time now if you look at maharaja ranjit singh's time you have religious freedom no you know this heretical sects you know that came out for uh, you know this nirankaris brindran wala you know he was a monster and you know we have put his video where he, you know he just says the most outrageous things like for example there is a statement he says if my bus is not released i will chop 5000 hindus in like one hour so this kind of person has been made by a saint by this you know you can imagine what is their conscience and what is their intelligence but anyways he comes to the stage first time in 1978 with this nirankaris conflict with this what are nirankaris is you know uh, they are a sect of uh, sikhs and noble they come from maharaja ranjit singh time so what does that mean or this uh, nandharis that means there was religious freedom you can start your own sect nobody has any problem with you but and you know what, what they say you know like recently i also said you know he is one of my uh, most inspirational figures guru tegh bahadur but they say guru tegh bahadur sacrificed uh, sacrifices life for religious freedom what kind of religious freedom are you offering in punjab so you know they uh, sgpc issued a fatwa in 1978 and we have put it on uh, the seva handle and we have also translated some line you compare him to aurangzeb to what sgpc has done oh, i am not saying aurangzeb was like uh, guiltless you know he has sowed seeds that we are still suffering from but compared to what this sgpc has done aurangzeb is a lamb you know he was he reigned over this such a huge country he could have done whatever but you know he would like basically take this people and he would say okay like convert to islam or whatever otherwise i'm going to like kill you and you know like torture you or i'm going to destroy your temple this sgpc in 1978 issued a fatwa on this uh, nirankaris who were 5% of the punjab population in complete genocidal terms anybody can read it you know we have translated part of it anybody in gurmukhi you know you can do it they call them scourge to humanity they all methods to be you should be used to purge them out and you know what so you know they have done so what power they had sgpc they have worked worse like what is it and you know this 5% they hid like uh, what do you say uh, they became like jews in a nazi country so they couldn't practice overnight their religious uh, what do you say the congregation hall shut down and even now somebody has told me okay some are sprouting up in punjab but if you say like you come to delhi you will see nirankari bhavan everywhere you see himachal you see nirankari bhavan you haryana actually where sgpc rules where they claim they rule in the name of the gurus that's where we have the least religious freedom you know they they speaks uh, such kind of nonsense and anyways you know like okay like mara and it's just not diversity like maharaja ranjit singh's time it is the apogee of sikh power so if you look at uh, of that time how he saw himself as you know a hindu or you know like some cult you know like evangelical cult so you know anything so for example if you look at his mausoleum his mausoleum is uh, what we call a samadhi you know because thankfully it is in pakistan so this sgpc has not broken it if you google ramjeet singh samadhi lahore you find his samadhi has an uh, uh, idol of ganesha front and center if you enter his samadhi there is uh, sun god surya devta because you know he says i am from the lineage of uh, what do you say uh, 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 from this uh, what do you say suryamanshi so you know his coin so you, you say for example his coin is uh, usually say akal sahai uh, and uh, nanak ji a uh, nanak dev ji right so he says like a uh, timeless or like the god you know blesses guru nanak but if uh, i forgot the year i think you know we have posted on our handle you can go and check and look so it is in the british museum in some places where for example he says akal dev ki nandan ji namdan in you know uh, abraj so what means dev ki nandan is what krishna krishna is god himself so these gurus they were basically saints who were sent to you know re reenergize and you know revival and teach bhakti and stand for dharma they were not like prophets that they made out to be like islamic prophets or something like that so god was krishna 
Guru Nanak was a great saint. Then if you look at his, you know, battle flags of Maharaja Ranjit Singh's time, they have like, again, all their Hindu battle flags. So they have like Durga on top, they have Hanuman, they have Kartike. Then if you see where he is donating, you know, so you say golden temple, you know, and now uh, Modi ji showed like in Kashi Vishwanath, he gave thousand kilos of gold. But again, you know, he also, there is a third in uh, Jawala ji. And Jawala ji is a very revered place because Guru uh, Gopin Singh ji also wrote about it. Uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh actually married there by Vedic rites in, in, uh, in Jawala ji. And, you know, it's actually very dangerous when he was in bad health. He sent his grandson. It was like, you know, a very dangerous thing to do because, you know, like uh, it was not democracy. Okay. This next person is going to be a ruler, you know, people kill each other. So they had a chance, but that person went, left Lahore and went to uh, Jwala ji to pray for Maharaj and Ji Singh's life. If you look at, you know, uh, pilgrimages that uh, uh, he's doing, he's again, you know, going to uh, Jwala ji where he is giving donations. He's giving donations to Dasis and uh, Nirmalas mostly. They were like, again, a Sikh set which have been removed from Sikhism by this, you know, evangelical cult of SGPC. You know, they were the scholars and they saw themselves uh, strongly in the Hindu fold. All the scholars that came like big scholars, they were either Nirmalas or Udasis. And now because they would not reject themselves as being Hindu, they were purged out of the faith. So this is what they have done. So um, now if you point this out, you know, like, you know, again, this is such a confused generation. If this Khalasani, they say Khalsa Raj, Maharaja Ranjit Singh. But if you point them out, they have no answer. Maharaja Ranjit Singh, everything what he did. So, so for example, the only punishment that brought like uh, uh, capital punishment was not if you try to kill the Maharaja. Somebody tried and he was not killed. The only uh, crime that brought capital punishment was cow slaughter in Maharaja Ranjit Singh's empire. So, for, you know, when he, he, he died, uh, you know, a Gita was kept on his body. And, uh, you know, everything from marriage to his children, to how he fought, to, you know, like what he built, you just see like he, you know, completely in like a Hindu fold. And idea was, yes, we are a part of Sanatan Dharma. And so now they say, no, no, Maharaja Ranjit Singh was, you know, like uh, corrupted, you know, he became Brahminical. Again, you know, this is so much nonsense. Okay, what is Sikhs? We didn't really have a kingdom, but, you know, if you leave Maharaja Ranjit Singh's time, Guru Gobind Singh Ji had two darbars in Ponta Sahab and, you know, like Anandpur Sahab. And what you have is basically, you know, so for example, he's very famous. He had like 54 poets in his assembly and, you know, 52 sometimes it, it's a number. It could be, uh, maybe it's 50, it's 48 or something, but it's like, you know, a mythological number. So it's, uh, they say 52, but if you look at what these people are writing, these people are writing different versions of Mahabharata. Why are they writing if they have nothing to do with Sanatana? They are translating, for example, what are the classical texts of warfare of our, uh, of our past. They are translating it into local language. So why were they doing it? You know, and like, for example, uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, he makes this uh, uh, army. So he writes Ugradanti. It, it's, it's a very, very powerful. And, you know, even if you read today, like you're blown away and Nihang Singh. So, you know, it's just called, sometimes it's called Chake Chan. It means it's only Che Chan. It's only six verses. So, you know, if you read what it is, again, it's like classic. It's not just like, uh, uh, what do you say, worship of uh, Devi, of Durga. And, you know, this part was actually part of his Granth that came before Shastra Namala. Before you go to weapons, you worship the Durga, which is the weapons, right? And again, it's version of it. It's basically like classic Hindu version. So, for example, how you do is, you know, first you say Ahavan. Then you basically say Avan is invocation. Then you say, uh, what do you say? Ustati, you know, like you, you, you sing praises of it. Then you say Benti. Benti is after doing it, you request, okay, give me this strength and you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. And then it's Falshruti. Like, so you do it in a congregation and everybody who has listened to it would be, would be blessed. So, you know, this, this uh, Ugradanti follows exactly this pattern. But you know what this Khalasthani is doing again, you know, this started by this British. They will pick up one line and they will do it. So, for example, there is one line. He says, you know, uh, I want to start a Tisar plant. I want to start a third way. So, this they have said, you know, we are not Hindus, we are not Muslim, we are a third way. Again, you know, like they are so stupid. So, it's only, as I said, you know, it's Chechand or, you know, six, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, paragraphs or, uh, you know, like uh, it's, it's not that big. You can read it. So, this is line 119 where he says Tisar plant. So, what is, if you go two lines before, is line 117. What does that line say? 
that line says you know like give me the power so i basically remove the curse of cow slaughter from the world you go two lines after of teaser plan which is line 121 what does it says it says give me the strength so you know they i make uh, vedas and saraswati sing in the everywhere so you know they remove entire context and they put one sentence and you know from sgpc from the top like you know like pakistan have you know national narrative from the top they just spout nonsense which has basically like uh, you know uh, nothing so yeah and again you know it's it's very interesting now they say you know like uh, if you uh, if you are not uh, sing you are not a sikh uh, very interesting you know there is a book by ganda singh and <laughs> ganda singh is a very interesting character in himself but you know he is the best of the worst he is also a singh sabha apologist so but he is the best of the worst and he wrote he wrote a book where he basically translates guru's letters right so if you see those letters you find very interesting so let's look at his father right guru tegh bahadur who was martyr most of them are going you know to east of india they are going to assam they are going to bengal they are going to prayag so this idea of like locating sikhi to a geographical location or a language is completely stupid why is he sending these letters over there he was basically charging in the east now if you look at the uh, his son after he has made the khalsa you he sees letter so when this letter was sent they were usually sent to like an important person and then you know so uh, important people like four or five people so and then you will say okay like this is this congregation and it is addressed to four or five people of that congregation no you you just do an analysis there are sikhs and then there you know without singh so they were equally part and they were respected members that's why he is sending this letters and you know these are some letters by ganda singh to give you an example of how uh, uh, honorable ganda singh is he found a letter Uh, which was addressed to uh, which was in uh, in what do you say preserved in haryana by this you know people who preserved this genealogies or something like that so in that you have like letters and it's very authentic by guru tegh bahadur also and guru gobind singh also and you know he says okay i come here and you know like these people have come and you know like uh, so guru says you know uh, i am the son of guru tegh bahadur and you know our uh, Uh, our uh, our goddess our personal goddess is nana devi and uh, uh, our personal uh, priest is this person you know i forget the name but so, so ganda singh because he didn't want to say okay this is singh sabha he should not say whether guru has said this or not or whether this is authentic or not but because it didn't fit with his narrative he threw this letter in the dustbin after that some madanjit kaur she did this research and she said okay this letter is completely authentic but you know it doesn't fit they they throw like the history or gurbani in, into the dustbin this is what this singh sabha and sdpc has done there was uh, you know to give you another example so from when guru was doing war it's a very powerful it is pa- essential part of sikh liturgy you know i'm telling you something you will not believe it's called binti chupai so and so and it is you know nobody knows the entire grand but this is what people uh, sing so for example when manmohan singh became the prime minister some journalist went to uh, his wife and you know how you feel and she's like oh i feel very nice and i always recite this hymn benti chupai so it's from guru gobind singh this time and it is essential part of the liturgy that you know it's part of the five essential prayers that you have to recite this act now what guru had written the, he had written 29 verses but what sgpc forces everybody to sing is 25 verses why because at 26 verses he says kripa kari hum pe jagmata like jagmata like you know please bless me so they like we can't accept this you know because their narrative has become like this christian evangelical what they have said they purged so if you go to gurdwaras you know there are people who are baptized six they grow up they live with faith they recite this uh, you know this uh, the believing this is guru's entire uh, poem for 70 years and they die and they never knew these people have done this kind of fraud so this is what they this is what they do they they have chopped guru's words themselves and you know like uh, again you know like this uh, uh, whether the uh, sikhs are uh, uh, hindus are not so uh, you know like how how do you define it so uh, like assume so you know there are people who want to kill you right so there are the moguls who killed no you can read what moguls wrote they killed thinking you were hindus let's assume you were sikh but what is a fact is the the moguls killed you thinking uh, 
you were not some separate religion but you were hindus now the rajputs now if you look at the rajputs always protected the guru so uh, you know for example guru tegh bahadur is uh, executed in 1675 now nobody knows it in 1665 aurangzeb had issued a fatwa again you know that uh, uh, guru should be killed and in 1665 this uh, house of jaipur gives a personal guarantee that you know you please leave him and uh, you know we take personal responsibility that he will do nothing and you know we will take with him and you know he'll be no this is actually very interesting because you know this is not a small risk because once uh, shivaji maharaj had left the aurangzeb basically bankrupted his entire empire trying to subdue shivaji like the biggest or, or maratha empire so the biggest monument he created and you know that was uh, the biggest monument in the entire muslim world for over two centuries was this bashai masjid in lahore aurangzeb created when he thought he had subdued shivaji maharaj so and again you know shivaji maharaj escaped and you know so he was like okay he he should have thought you know there is this uh, guy uh, guru teg bahadur he is respected by all hindus and you know he is traveling you know he is also armed and you know he has a spiritual power and you know like what if he becomes another shivaji maharaj and you see when the uh, house of jaipur releases him he has been married for 30 years he doesn't have a son after he is released on the personal guarantee of jaipur rajputs in 10 or i think 11 and a half months guru gobind singh ji is born now nobody has looked at from this perspective so you know if if uh, jaipur house would not have you know released guru tegh bahadur guru gobind singh ji would not have maybe this great civilization would have produced uh, guru gobind singh ji but it would not have been from the womb of mata gujri because for 30 years they didn't have a kid and guru gobind singh ji has also said you know like when my father was released you know he went to prayag and he went to and he did all this tirat so i could be born and i am born to you know fight for dharma so again you know like uh, uh, this is what they doing and uh, you know like it can just like become uh, what do you say uh, like a very like but i recommend a great book by harjot obroy and he wrote this book like Mm, almost 30 years ago it was 1994 and sun challenge it's one of the greatest book of sis scholarship it's called construction of religious boundaries uh, you know in uh, in sikhism and it's an excellent book and he basically goes in this 80s 90s how this abramization of sikhism comes and you know there is a contest uh, contesting between uh, traditional sikhs and this neo sikhs that have been created by the british so it's an excellent book but what i have been trying today is like this is in the middle abramization there is something ahead of this what happens and that is and there is something behind it so we go ahead which is dehinduization and the sikh communal politics which is exactly like muslim league i've already like gone in the beginning of this thing so for example you know uh, uh the biggest problem was this you know when they uh, wanted to create a separate sikh identity was this they not only they were intermarrying their marriage rituals their birth ceremonies uh, their death ceremonies they were all the same so they created this new thing that you know they have to be separate so the birth separate now this for example you know the sikhs before that they were marrying by vedic rites you can read the british system or you can read the british travelers or the british government or the people who anybody has written so they created this anand marriage act in 1909 and you look at what is fascinating is this anand marriage act it is not passed in india the indians here the traditional scholars everybody is opposed to it so what british take is they take this anand marriage act to the imperial legislative uh, council what is imperial legislative council is in britain where only like prince links can come so they get this guy from naba to basically support it so they they get it in england and they forced it on us so again the separate identity for example now the other thing is you know they created this core now again this has been thought of you know uh, you know everybody thinks this is guru's order every sick woman is a core this is also 100 year old creation bhai core is a rajput title from cover and some women did have it but if you look at for example guru's wife she is called the mother of khalsa i again is from ganda sikh book you know you read i don't know maybe there are 8 or 10 letters by her you read in every letter bar none she has signed herself as saib devi she never called herself saib core but if you go uh, if you google or you go sgbc history or you go wikipedia you will find herself uh, find her side code so th- you know uh, this is what they have done 
and you know what is so fascinating again you know the uh, they said you know they went a step ahead you know for example this indian idea for example there is nothing like hinduism there is nothing like sikhism because we are not a confessional idea we are a, we are not a confession based system we are a knowledge based system so the system is all about gyan and we say wherever you come from gyan you know you bow your head that's why wherever we see a temple wherever we see a saint we bow down that was our entire idea and that's why everybody was uh, coming also to it but you look at it even the confessional faiths they were like you know you have to believe that muhammad is the prophet of god or you have to believe jesus is the son of god you know they also asked for positive positive affirmation but if you look at what the sgbc created because they wanted to dehinduize it they said to be a sikh it's not just you believe in gurus and you believe in the granth because but all the punjabi hindus believed in it they are like you have to be not a sikh no you just imagine you know what they have done they have just like you know bypassed even the abrahamics by a long stretch you know this is the communal politics how can you say like you know like how can for example i can say uh, i am a hindu only if i believe in arya samaj and i don't believe in shak you can say okay so what kind of nonsense is this so you know this definition again what is what is to be a sikh nobody was concerned you know they were living by guru's teachings or something this idea of what is to be a sikh it has to be a negative definition that you are not a hindu that again comes from the british time and you know that is an, so and you know again this is this nonsense so what you know this is a completely manufactured narrative is also seen from another point of view you look at this you know where sgpc is this where they you know like uh, spread the poison that has been fed by the british the sikhs outside of punjab like i'm from delhi you know this tajinder bagga is from delhi this jatender shante is from delhi you know like all this uh, people who speak for mother india and against khalistan and uh, what do you say uh, killings you know pogrom of sikhs happened in delhi so if you see like if there was some discrimination against sikhs or there was sikh separatism or something like that on the ground then it should have come from delhi where we are like 2% it should not no it should not be made where sikhs are a majority in punjab but there is nothing pogrom happened we are a minuscule minority but you know we we have no confusion who we are you know we are part of the civilization and you know gurus are you know not prophets but great saints with you know examples to teach and we have to do it and again uh, you know this is when they did it uh, they, they they when they try to do for example the christians would say you don't have a prophet they made guru a prophet then you like you don't have a book then you like okay granth no granth is what guru granth sahab like again you know guru granth sahab is an anthology and then dasham granth is an omnibus you know omnibus is like multiple books in one you know they are on different subject and anthology is like different saints and singing and you are synthesizing it now if you look at the british this idea that there is a single granth also didn't exist you know like so they were like okay these are you know these are revered uh, uh, creations from guru gurus so they were like really respected uh, like anything but this is also uh, done by you know the, under the british thing and again you know there is a fine paper by arvind pal singh mandir you know he says you know they just distorted everything so for example one of the main guys who started all this nonsense was veer singh and if you wiki do wikipedia you will be like oh veer singh is like a great scholar or something you know like he he won a sahitya academy award there is in delhi there is a bhai veer singh sadan where like a big library and on wikipedia they say he is like the founder of you know like punjabi novel or something like fiction or something like so this guy veer singh his novels you know again literally his novels are like naseem e jazi in pakistan so like you know in his novels the the muslim is always like tyrant the hindu is always coward and the sikh is always brave and when the hindu becomes sikh he immediately becomes brave so this is the kind of his level of his intellect if you read like a fine fiction novel like dostoevsky he actually makes the bad guy the most attractive as much as possible so you know that, that is something you against with the grave with the world but this was veer singh no what veer singh has done just to give you two examples he for example uh, you know like this guy when uh, jallianwala bagh happened in 1909 now you see this uh, 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 rabindranath tagore he was sitting 1000 miles away in calcutta he gave up his knighthood 
then there was churchill and churchill didn't have a good opinion of india or hindus he called us beastly people with beastly religion this was john but even churchill when he saw jallianwala bagh has happened he called it monstrosity Mont- and like the biggest disgrace on the english crown but this veer singh who was sitting 1 km from jallianwala bagh in his entire life so he lived for four decades after and you know he wrote pages and pages and pages and pages he never said one word against jallianwala bagh or anything about jallianwala bagh so you know these people used to polish the boots of the british with their tongue and this what you know so they said what is this granth is just like some poetry and some you know like, like devotion what it it is doesn't have like for example the the like the bible you know like there is there is a movement there is a structure so he started doing it so for example he says this ekomkar it doesn't have to do with omkar of the rigved because it has ek in front of it no he wrote pages and pages and pages just to do this nonsense like ekomkar is, has nothing to do with omkar but he would not write anything on jalia manava so anyways and now you see what level of fraud he did was one of the most important books of sikh history is called uh, prachin panth prakash by ratan singh bhangu no why is this uh, book important is because at that time printing press came in punjab in 19, 1880s right after that before that uh, writing a book was a very difficult thing you know like you have to get somebody to write it you know somebody who doesn't make mistakes you, you have to bind it it was a very expensive thing now this guy ratan singh bhangu he comes from very illustrious families so one side of his family is coming from maharaja ranjit singh and other side of his family is coming from uh, what do you say like a great sikh warrior right and in his book why is it interesting is in his book he makes references to other books so not only he is in a very privileged position he is also a well read person that he can make references to other books now what veer singh did was because bhangu always thought of sikhs and this is maharaja ranjit singh's time as hindus so he wrote everywhere hindu dharma hindu dharma hindu dharma what veer singh did was he removed hindu and put sikh 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 everywhere this is the level of fraud they have committed now he removed purge everything about devi devtas and you know like when you go in a war that's why guru uh, gobind singh ji wrote about chandi when you fight for dharma it's always with durga that's why you know like aurangzeb destroyed the pandapur temple but shivaji maharaj also said jai bhavani so when you fight for dharma it is always with durga so you know and uh, he wrote, he he purged everything he put things from himself but you know he didn't he didn't know this will happen the thing was panth prakash because it was so important people found older manuscripts of it and this older manuscripts they match with each other but they don't match with what uh, veer singh has done so he committed entire fraud and believe you me if you are uh, what do you say uh if you want to be a, a pracharak or a preacher of sikhism you have to read book of sikh uh, veer singh all the books that you have to read and you you have to read by veer singh who is the big the fraudster of the biggest order and even where he writes he says okay don't say this say it like this so there is no concept of intellectual integrity but again you know this uh, uh this sellouts of uh, british like for example this veer singh his father you know like uh, there was one guy macaulay who wrote the history of sikhs and because he wrote it in english that became like the authoritative version and he had this like two minions like uh, kan singh naba and uh, veer singh so if you read what history of uh, gurus he has written by macaulay and that is the authoritative history he says guru gobind singh said how he said he does nobody knows but this is the authoritative history like history of the sikhs in five or six volumes that was written by macaulay he said guru gobind singh ji said uh, when the british would come oh you khalsa you you join forces with them i am paraphrasing you know i have we have also posted on seva handle anybody can read it but i'm just paraphrasing you know like the british would be great and you know they they will have like a, a lot of name you join forces their kingdom will go north south east west you also go with them and you know if you be loyal to them you, uh, the god is going to give you like a uh, riches a lot of name a lot of fame a lot of health and a lot of wealth so that is why he wrote the he wrote the history that basically you know we have to be todis of the british and this uh, veer singh and kan singh naba and you know we have nothing to do with hinduism so divide them that they don't uh, first a joint fight and this is what they have done and you know uh, uh, what do you say again you know uh, uh, 
so another interesting point is for example a sikh name now for example you see like pre gore and there is nothing they are all good names and something like that there is nothing like but if you read like the older names from sikh history there is i don't know any now harjinder or gurpreet or you know like this kind of sikh names again this came in like 100 years ago you know to separate you know our name should not be same our marriages should not be same uh, uh, what you do and uh, what is uh, and uh, yeah and uh, what is very interesting is you know who defines a sikh now okay this is a singh sabha version now when the british were saying you know like sikhs are hindu are different and this guy am a caliph you can have a secret cid reporting he said i have removed them from this uh, curse of pantheism and i made them a separate nation so when they say kom 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 they should be very clear that they have been made a nation or this idiocracy of nation not by the gurus but by my caliph and you look at when the british was forcing us this anand marriage act and everything who were the who can define you know, they are the sikh scholars who went who were who went to this gurdwaras and they said we were hindus now who were the what do you say the bloodline of the gurus no nobody has actually studied them so you know so the guru nanak the first guru his bloodline is the bedis and you know we had this so and you know they had the huge stature because they were the direct bloodline and you know they were supposed to be like uh, possessed with spiritual power thousands of people will congregate and uh, you know when they will go to gurdwara they will be given a gadeo you know like so they would sit on a bit higher position than the others and when this singh sabha started to make noise they were kicked out so they they had a huge reverence that you uh, you can't imagine you know it's like for example this bhosle of shivaji maharaj multiplied by a million that kind of reverence they held in punjab and so that was then the third guru were bhallas they were always like the biggest scholars so the guy who was the amanuses of guru granth sahib he was also a balla and the sodis from 4 to 10 gurus they had political power you know if you had to go to malwa you had to take their permission they had a lot of all these people who were the gurus bloodline they said we were hindus now what do you say after them what is the authority is the princely state so when this started muslim league is making pakistan some idea was we make also khalistan and they were like you know the biggest princely state was patiala so they were like we'll make uh, uh, patiala uh, the uh, king of patiala the uh, head of khalistan you know this was also like one of this akali uh, uh, discussion now if you look the patiala he basically said you know like we are hindus this is again a 100 years ago this was not even uh, what do you say a shocking thing it was the most natural thing uh, you know like that we are hindus and you know there is a great book and again you have to uh, uh, it's called uh, six separate separatism of politics of faith uh, by rajiv kapoor and that was written by he, he was doing his phd thesis in 1980s and when i was going through india today archives i just read a review by tavleen singh and then i made sure i found the book and now i have always also put the pdf online so you can get it it's one of the most important books that anybody should read who is interested in it so you know this discussion happened in punjab assembly and the hindus of punjab they say you know we have been revering they come from our caste uh you know we intermarry we rever we always keep granth sahib in our home like how can you say we are not sikh we have always been sikh you know you see the lectures our ancestors were sikh the gurus had like close relationships with them and how can you say it? and you know they would send this discussions to the central government central british government and the central british government say like what they are saying is completely logical but they the punjab government the punjab british government would say you know you are giving a lawyerly argument these people are doing direct action on the street so they basically gave into this uh, akali demand you know create the separate hindu sikh identity and only somebody who says who is not a hindu only he can be a sikh that nonsense started from there so this is again a british thing and even if you read like the british papers they agreed this doesn't have basis in honestly or in truth or in logic or what do you say in fact but it is something they had to concede because of street muscle of these akalis and if you look at like punjabi hindus you know they keep getting abuses because they have become like just like pakistanis uh they never abuse any of the sikh gurus because even today you know they intermarry i am married into a separate pant you know we have no separation we just respect each other we are part of this uh, greater civilization and you know uh, uh, so now like for example you know like now we move this was like for example dehinduization now you go to uh, uh, the first point colonization so you see colonization when this happens so punjab is basically two parts you know largely divided by satluj one is eastern punjab that 
Punjab we have in India, right? And that was ruled by British or the princely states. And one is the above Satluj Punjab that is in uh, Punjab in Pakistan, and that was ruled by Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Now, if you look at this, like the British come here, but they they don't enter. They don't enter for a decade till Maharaja Ranjit Singh has died. Like the the uh, what do you say? Or seven years till Maharaja Ranjit Singh has died. When British come, they create churches everywhere in Kapoorthala and everywhere. But there is no church in the Pakistani Punjab or the main Punjab or Maharaja Ranjit Singh Khalsa Empire. When the British come, immediately the very same year they create a church in Punjab. And what does that church do? You know, like people will go and they start mass conversion. It was not a small thing. They converted uh, what do you say the sky of Kapoorthala. So Kapoorthala was the second biggest. Uh, you know princely state so imagine it i don't know not pune but maybe they created the raja of you know uh, gaikwad of baroda into christian no it was like a big threat they converted the son of maharaja ranjit singh into a christian no imagine if sambhaji maharaj had converted into christian uh, uh, into muslim what kind of uh, how would they have felt so you know these people who had defeated their empire they were converting you know the son of maharaja ranjit singh they went to golden temple and they created like a seminary outside golden temple they created even a bunga inside and what they did was in the sikh missionary college where people were being tried to be sikh missionaries they converted sikh missionaries into christian missionaries and you know then it became like a so the british idea was you know like convert these people but they were doing this and at that time if you look uh, the population of you know the sikhs in the british army is actually very less but when this 1857 happened and if you look at the british they they didn't know whether the sikhs or the punjab is going to join uh, this national struggle or not and they were really afraid but when punjab doesn't join this uh, mutiny of 1857 then they basically saying okay okay these people we have to have like some people you know to uh, control this same indians because they were a very uh, small uh, uh, minority here then they create this idea of you know like sikh separatism and something like no for example you know there is uh, i can't go into the details but there is uh, uh, my talk in hindi with sanjay dikshit ji is called evolution of a college sikhs it's in hindi i have given complete evidence this 5k is that we assume is like fundamental to sikh faith that has also been created by the british it has no basis now uh, what do you say i've also given a talk to kushal mehra and in english where also we'll pre- present evidence from journal papers and something so you see this british create five case and you say they say okay this is your identity and what the british were saying you have to join the army sikhs are great if you, if you want to join the sikh regiment you know you get benefits if you don't have five case you must wear the five case if you if you remove the five case in the army you will throw from the army no this is such a stupid thing to do no imagine you know you don't want to believe me or not but let's say you when you train somebody to be a soldier now that is very a responsible job and it costs a lot of money to the government right it is like training a doctor now i'm saying you are wearing a green shirt i'm saying okay if you if you wear a pink shirt i'm going to cancel your license what is my interest in you wearing a green shirt so what is the british interest that this there should be sikhs and they should have like separate identity no everybody should have, because this was the official british policy that the sikh should be separate and when i said about the sikh sabha movement the biggest support was came from in this uh, people they had recruited in the army and you know to give you an example how they used as common fodder now they are you know in uk they are trying to get benefits because this west feels like guilt oh you know the sikhs fight for the british army and stuff like that and something oh wahi and you know they fought for freedom what kind of nonsense you are saying okay let's assume they fought for freedom they they took like the sikh people everywhere and made them policemen in china in burma in hong kong its policemen also fighting for freedom and they were basically like they were a colonial power so again you know they just you they make any kind of history to feel better about themselves so you know yeah so they made you know like 5k and this 5k was used okay if you don't have a 5k you don't be a sikh for 175 years after guru uh, made the khalsa in no hukum nama in uh, in no history that is written there is mention of 5k but they made uh, no rahitnama they have made a 5k and you know there is, there is there is a cost to you know create this people what do you say uh, like uh, like pakistanis and we will go into it but anyway so first was conversion 
that was co option in the army and uh, and the third is actually uh, you know some things you also do by uh, from a good attention but they actually go wrong so you must have heard this place uh, uh, in pakistan uh, layalpur right so that comes from a layal he was like a very important officer in the british punjab and he basically was very also important in converting desert light into canal colonies so you know when the hindus uh, and the uh, what do you say sikhs they were really over represented in punjab like it was almost 50 50 50% muslim 50% non muslim but the sikhs especially the khatris and the arors they they got all the jobs right and they they were every so this muslim league would always come and make the representation to the british government that you know we are 50% we are not getting the jobs but they are getting the jobs you should make quotas and stuff like that and the british argument was always like you know we have a open market system you accept british education you go to their school you compete you know everything is merit based you get the jobs nobody is starting you so they would go again and again and this would happen but what layal thought no 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 there is some resentment you know yeah there is some resentment so what what i should do is uh, maybe appease them and make some quotas and this first quotas were actually not made public but once he made this quotas you know these people who got this quota jobs their commitment became not to their citizen but to their community who made the quotas then these authorities they were getting the quotas they formed their own bureaucracy they became super powerful so actually this muslim communalism and this is great research by n gerard barrier he doesn't really have a book you have to read research papers so that is even before that he basically finds out you know this quota system like really starts communalizing and dividing thing first there was some emphasis you know that you know merit based system an engineer is an engineer for everyone so you know there is a common nationhood but once you started the quota is like a muslim engineer or a sikh engineer so communal politics actually started in 1817 in 1880s because of the decision by layal and if you look at even ambedkar you know and uh, what he says is he say the argument is you should get affirmative action because generation past have been oppressed no the thing is what kind of logic is this like if generation past have been oppressed you oppress the current generations so if you look at the argument that made some sense in the beginning when quotas were given they were supposed to be given for only 10 years 10 years was like okay this generation suffered this generation will get some benefit so half a generation is 10 years is basically half a generation so this generation suffered this generation gets a benefit but once you created the system now it is in perpetuity forget about removing after 10 years it has expanded and expanded and expanded and expanded so you know once you develop a bureaucracy it's very hard to do it and uh, and you know there is a great book by thomas sowell affirmative action around the world and he has given me you know you can't question that with data and evidence wherever it has been tried it has actually so division and separation it hasn't really helped people who was it supposed to help as well it has built resentment against you know like the other thing which have been like built as a process so that was like the three parts and you know like now we'll basically conclude so now this have created again you know like uh, they are like whether you are hindu it doesn't matter what your hindus or not but you know you should understand what is written right so let's say what is if you go if you go up a prayer is or is ardas right now there are different sects so the first uh, paragraph is basically by guru gobind singh after that is basically sgpc and singh sabha and they have put and different uh, sects put their own thing but what is the common you know it basically you uh, you remember the first nine gurus so the ninth guru is father of guru gobind singh and guru gobind singh they say tek bahadur simriya karno ne diya vitha now basically once you have uh, detached people from the puranic path nobody knows you meet a normal sikh who is basically gone gurdwara and he is saying this prayer for entire life he doesn't know the meaning of the first paragraph and this is not some sanskrit or hebrew this is braj bhasha this is anybody can understand so tek bahadur simriya means simran means Uh, meditate or remember guru tegh bahadur tegh bahadur se priye ghar no nidhi aave dhai so ghar mein no nidhi aayengi or nine treasures will come to your home so why there are nine treasures why there are not six treasures why there are not 12 treasures why there are not 13 treasures this is the pranic idea that there are eight siddhis eight special powers and uh, no nidhi uh, what do you say nine treasures so you, if you have read uh, hanuman chalisa says ar siddhi navnidhi ke data aswardin jan ki mata anybody from up bihar can understand what it means but what this modern neo six that they have created they have no sense what they are saying 
no again this is the first paragraph now if you take the guru granth sahib and you know after that we will conclude you look at that you know let's say the penultimate page like the last page has the ra- uh, ragmala but the, that is 1430 if you go to 1429 there is a beautiful shabad by guru tegh bahadur and he says you know when this operation of aurangzeb is happening at that time he sings uh bal chutyo pandan pade kachna ho to pae uh ek let me see wo thari ha keh nanak ab ho thari ki gajju ho to pae so now again you know what does this mean if you read guru granth sahib he says the translation is i have lost my power uh i have been uh, uh, i have been restrained i cannot do anything only lord can help like he helped an elephant now you say does it have any sense now this is actually coming from gajendra moksha from bhagavat puran where this gajendra you know like uh, he is from trikuta or something from some there and you know uh, like an alligator holds his uh, feet and he tries to break free but he doesn't and you know he tries and in the end he like you know sings a cry to vishnu and that beautiful cry basically becomes the invocation of vishnu shastra so he is saying like gajes gajraj you know but so he is making reference to that but you said we don't have anything to do with bhagavat puran do it then you basically sing lord help lord, lord will help me like he helped an elephant does it make any sense so this is what they have created they just like root learning they have from the start to the end they cannot make any sense of what is written unless you go into like the metaphorical and the mythological meaning and you you will not understand any depth that's why there is like this mass conversion and you know there is a cost to pay so for example i am I, anybody has to believe anything if they want to believe now to give you an example and with this we will really conclude i think you know we went really over the bit look at this for example look at pakistanis and sikhs for example right they went to britain around the same time they lived in same neighborhoods they went to the same schools they got same education they came from same background their parents had the same kind of blue collar jobs you know like cleaning toilets working in the airport in the 60s 70 no after that what you see is like pakistanis are at the bottom and the sikhs are at the top they are even above hindus right i think they are the second most uh, just uh, jews so you know like uh, they have like three or four times uh, uh, the income of the pakistanis the they are very low in crime pakistan are very high in crime compared to the average white so you know like uh, with the uh, uh, crime everything so why are six more successful and the uh, pakistanis are you know they have the same language they have the same culture i talk you know like uh, there is no but you know people are the same but what your values you put that makes a world of a difference so like uh, this pakistani culture and our culture is different maybe it was not different at some point in time in 60s and 70s it is not but when this islamism came and now you see a world of a difference so you know uh, britain is one of the few places that collects data on the basis of religion and it is called nep like national Equi- equity program or something like that you you just you put nep and britain and sikh and uh, muslim so muslims are mainly from pakistan when they got in early 2000 and sikhs are of course from punjab so they are all punjabis they are comparing and you know just this religion difference can be now what they have created this khalistanis they have created a version of pakistanis so i am giving you an example when the british came and you know like indians were always professionals they take indians all over the world so for 200 years we have a good data of indians everywhere in the world not just in europe or uh, in pacific they have only been for 100 years but you know like in africa uh, they they went everywhere in caribbean and some they always have some a few things in common very low in diverse very high in education very high in economics uh, very low in crime and again these are the things that make it successful now what these khalibanis they are they are not khalistanis they are talibanis they have the same things you know chop hands they have chopped hand outside a gurdwara in australia not just here in outside delhi you do brisbane gurdwara you will find they have chopped a hand on uh, last september you know they kill people they are like blasphemy blasphemy concept like again you know this is a talibani concept you, you look at that you do just put gang bus canada a uh, drug bus canada and you see all sing 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 we have no history of this but because they have been created and they have accepted pakistani culture they have not just become a threat to us they have become a disgrace to us because i am challenging anybody who wants to do it and you know we can talk about any country any continent indians were always the most desirable immigrants for this four things lowest in crime 
lowest in divorce, highest in education, highest economic uh, attainment. What they have done, you know, it's so shameful. If you go to Vancouver, there is like East Side, you Google, you'll find people with turban begging and drug addicts. They in uh, you do like uh, you know like uh, like grooming gangs. They were doing a business of you know like uh, uh, what do you say uh, underage girls. They, this is what they are doing in Canada. So again, you know, because they have accepted this culture, and uh, it is our failure that we have not done is because freedom is not something you know. As Thomas Jefferson said, you do in one. Every generation has to fought, and we didn't fight. And you know, they this dysfunctional people that are living in Canada, they are bringing a complete. They are. they are as much threat to us as pakistanis and their outcome their behavior their manners their way of being is just like jihad and there are very good people in pakistan as well i don't want to rubbish it but they do have like this problem of putting everything in religion and a very intolerant interpretation of it and pakistanis will also concede that this is what they are doing so now what i have said you know like uh, uh, like this three phases what happens is colonization then abramization then dehinduization it's not just this happened and i think i have made a strong case but there has been a cost to pay for this the cost is like you know uh, uh, industry is dead in punjab they are going like donkeys there and they are indulging in all kind of things that have no association with indian immigrants what what these khalistanis are doing in canada and it's it's a it's a very dangerous thing and you know like again they have destroyed our guru gifted uh, reputation and uh, if i think this is uh, a very painful and if we don't rise it's not about whether hindus or sikhs or not it's about values whether we have uh, uh, values of dissent or not whether we have space for questioning or not and that is about being sanatan whether we have the values of let knowledge come from all directions whether we focus on the common humanity of all whether we can integrate everybody in our uh, uh, what do you say understanding of thing that is sanatan it's not again take from one belief system to another so what we are fighting is an evil jihadi cult and uh, the primary responsible for this is of course like the british who set in motion and sgpc if you look at their behavior this is basically pakistan inside india and this is my current research and i hope to write a book on this uh, within this year and with that i conclude thank you so much for your time uh, sir um, uh, ms has asked uh, views on uh, sanjeev nair spread on esamskriti.com do you have any view no. on this no sanjeev he is actually very uh, we are we follow each other on twitter but you know i respect him and he is also so the greatest scholar uh, of uh, modern sikhism his name was wh mcclord he was from new zealand and that we have a thing like sikhism in graduate studies in the west is because of this one great man wh mcclord and you cannot imagine how this guy was harassed by this sgpc and this khalistani lunatics like if i wish bad on somebody is there is like a guy in canada uh, california his name is uh, just beer singh man and every great scholar that has come he has basically destroyed their lives and done everything you know you can't even imagine like how vindictive how malevolent and uh, venal these people are anyways so you know he has read mcclord books so of course you know it it just shows so he writes better than anything that you read anything but again some things also like for example five case so you know sanjeev ji sent me a message Like look at this, and then I said, Sanjeev ji, this is actually not true. There is no basis for 5K. And after that, you know, they were saying we will carry Kirpan to uh, the aeroplane or something like that. Then I came out and released this. There are a lot of things that I have not released because I don't want to gratuitously hurt people. People also have to be ready to digest the truth. But again, that this I have already said, so I am telling you, there is no basis for 5K, which have they have made foundational to faith, and not just made foundational to faith. They are calling, they are uh, what do you say, disbarring people from the faith. or being part of the faith or like you can't vote in sgpc election if you don't have so no, this has become the definition of sikh which is completely a british invention uh, subhajiti mitra ji has said uh, how aap can be a threat to punjab aap no this is again you know politics uh, you know po- politics is again you know like i my subject is history right and uh, hi- history also of this khalistani terrorism this politics you can get pretty much anybody and they will have comment and everybody has an opinion so i i, I do it but you know again like i just like looking at it very objectively i think aap is like a very opportunistic party and they are not serious like what kind of statements they were making but at the same time i if i want to see like the positive sides you look at not just like the sikhs but the hindus which should be most concerned about the security right because they you know 
that's another topic in itself what hindus suffered in punjab and i've also given a talk on it somebody can uh, google hindus in punjab in 1980s but hindus have also voted in the same manner for aap and aap can be opportunistic cynical but they are not stupid so they will they should worry about punjab a because their vote is not the sikh but also hindus so they have to protect them b if they make a mess of punjab then they should forget india and it's very easy to make a, a mess of punjab so i think they will try their best to actually run it well because if they make up then they have no argument in delhi they just say modi doesn't let us work but if they make a mess of punjab what what case they can make in himachal or gujarat or anywhere in the world anywhere in the india so they have incentives to run it well whether they have the competence or the sagacity to do it it's an open question i don't want to go into it sir i have a question that uh, are there any instances of any rajput converting to sikh uh from uh, a person a rajput and sikh at the same time yeah so many like uh, what do you say like uh, okay he was like a monster this guy who basically like uh, bombed this air india his name is talwinder singh parmar no parmara rajput okay so sikh basically if you look at this na sikh being a sikh was like you know this they had this pan idea thing like i said the letters are going every, everywhere they are translating classical text into braj bhasha they were not translating in punjabi because braj bhasha was understood by the most number of indians at that time so the when the gurus translate or in maharaja ranjit singh's time the books that are written they are written in gurmukhi script but they are not written in punjabi they are written in braj so maximum number of people can understand and they, as i said it was not printing press so you can take a book and buy it these were mainly to be sung so they sung in a language that anybody understand now again i talked about ratan singh bangu you know like uh, he says when the guru says okay now we have a khalsa whether you want to go to like east or the west like entire india is open and they like no no we are in maja we want to focus here so this idea or also when guru writes a letter you know when he says punjab this punjab comes from basically main from he writes madradesh like for example if you have uh, listened to mahabharat, mahabharat. so nakul and sadev they are uh, they are the children of madri madri so madradesh is punjab so when guru writes letter he doesn't write punjab he is again and again putting himself in the larger mythological context so he says we are suryavanshi like we are from the sun lineage uh, the gurus were from the the dynasty of uh, ram we are the we are the children of love and kush we are from madradesh so there is no con- conception you know about language or locating this thing to a, a geography it was like the you know confidence the entire country is ours it is restricting you know to say for example vishnu's is usually 9 or 10 avatars if you include buddha what guru says is 24 avatar and you know what he is trying to do is trying to synthesize everyone so for example he puts buddha as the uh, as the avatar after krishna uh, uh, after uh, right he puts buddha but now what to do with the jainas because the thing is mahavir and buddha come at the same time so the two avatars cannot exist at the same time so he puts parshvanath the one who came before mahavir as as also an avatar of the vishnu this nobody has done but what guru was trying to do was try to synthesize all these things because that's why india was uh, losing one was technology you know like uh, what do you say uh, we didn't have war horses so war horses came from central asia that's why if you look at gurus there is a lot of focus on the horse then when he saw the artillery is coming and artillery is be- becoming what do you say like more powerful so in shastra nam mala he says as as kirpan khando khadak to pak tapak tir right but if you look at this you know and these are the weapons that come and they are traditional weapons but he focused on uh, artillery the most because he could see this would be the future so now when i talked about ugradanti bani you know like uh, was this section so again you know he says when he is talking about durga he talks about durga's weapon but he is also says durga top chalanti you know like he he tried to make even the what the cannon as a weapon of durga because it's a modern time so he was a modernist and he was trying to incorporate there is a shak tradition there is a vaishnav tradition there is a there is a buddh tradition there is a jain tradition he was trying to synthesize everything and this is the effort of the gurus and we have to take it forward it's not like you know okay there is a perfect being and we can't question and we just become you know there is a uh, when islam died this intellectual death in 1000 ad the idea came taklid taklid means okay this is the truth this is what has been written this is the, you can't question you can't use your brain and this is what they have done all this is taklid whereas if you are a living thing you have you have to look to the future 
you know if you are inspired by what do you say uh, shivaji maharaj it was, it was shivaji maharaj okay like you know he died in 1680 then his son shambhaji he fought so bravely for much longer and what do you say he died the most painful death but it was baji rao he he spread the maratha empire everywhere so if you are a great person like I, we don't say like uh, guru gobind singh ji is one of the greatest uh, of this mahabharati but you have to take his work forward we don't have to say okay this is the prophet and close the book and you know we uh, just every day just say, do a qawali or something so his work was strengthening india you know uh, uh, resurgence of indian civilization says synthesizing our div- uh, divisions so there is diversity but there is also synthesis and we are doing that work and this is the responsibility of all of us who are inspired by guru gobind singh okay thank you sir sir uh, when we say afghan sikh so are these people indigenous to afghanistan or the one who uh, were uh, converted to sikhism from punjab and later migrated to afghanistan i mean to say uh, are there any examples of sikhism in afghanistan where indigenous right was, uh, converted right right so this afghan sikhs they also go like to Mah- maharaja ranjit singh's time and also like this khatris no they are pathans they are ethnic pashtuns they are not punjabis mm-hmm. they are ethnic so the thing is now basically they face from talibans because taliban say oh you know you are cowards you converted our religion or something so they basically hide and they say they are punjabis but they are of the pashtun stock and you know i, I want to also tell you how this uh, another evidence how this hindu sikh division is created by sgbc so sgbc was in punjab where they were creating all this uh, nonsense you know you have to do it but if you go to where outside punjab but which is right next to punjab so for example sindh and afghanistan or afghana area peshawar is also you know beyond the indus indus is a boundary of punjab our india right in afghanistan and in sindh like which is beyond the indus the uh, distinction between hindu and sikh doesn't exist they call themselves nanakpanthi mm-hmm. they don't call their temples as gurudwara they still call their temples as dharmshala so again this is a 100 year old uh, what do you say 100 year creation like what is a gurudwara before this was run by the saints and monks and udasis it was called a dharmshala and they were all the scholars this nirmalas and these akalis they have no scholarship and they used to clean then they can never produce a scholar so this is the thing so again you know but they were not affected if you if you listen to what afghan saying maybe they are saying in pashto or something but uh, here very carefully they say their temple as dharmshala even today so that shows you that this all this division has been created by the sgps artificially created from the top okay sir thank you sir uh, punam ji has asked uh, what is the way out for the continued christian conversion going on in punjab now i punam ji again i have answered this many time i disagree but why do you focus on what they are doing this is not what our gurus have uh, said the locus of responsibilities lies on you you take responsibility what's in your con- why why you focus on what they like the thing is they are converting because they have created this cult where there is no space so everybody is escaping somebody can escape to canada somebody can escape to drugs somebody can escape to missionary that because what they are saying doesn't make any sense because it has no what do you say mercy you see how they lynch a person they what they are saying what i tell you know because they don't want they never tell what is the meaning of tek bahadur samri they do you don't know the meaning of the ardas you don't know what is written in granth sahib so how can if you have any brain how can you just like uh, read in a you know something and not understand so it is a spiritual crisis in punjab that's why people are escaping in all this direction and if we have to fix this we have to work for spiritual resurgence and it can start by simply speaking the truth like what there you will have to pay a lot of cost of for it you know and i and i if you are in india then i don't you know you have to be more careful than me even i have to suffer so much living in where free speech is supposedly the best protected on east coast of america but you know we have to take the courage of speaking the truth and then there will be a resurgence and you know there is this line by dushant kumar mere seene mein na sahi tere seene mein sahi ho kahin bhi aag lekin aag jalni chahiye and as long as this fire is burning you know between us you know i think we can uh, we can realize guru's dream and we can uh, if you know people will can uh, follow our guru's vision and uh, uh, want to be part of this sanatan sanskriti we don't have to be defenses we don't have to be like sdpc or pakistan we can have we can have a proactive mission for us okay Uh, Aditi has uh, asked. Uh, so, was the Akali Dal created by the British, and uh, what made them just blindly follow Islamist ways, like referring to Sikh dharma as Kaum, Bedavi, etc.? 
No, the British incentivize. So if you maybe you join later, I said they incentivize such behavior. So whatever you put, you know, like uh, uh, you put cost and incentives, right? So for example, you put caste politics in India. So whoever did it, now there is incentive to playing the caste. That's why Lalu Yadav caste, 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 and the state gets destroyed. Modi is like the biggest team, and I have like disagreements with him. But like caste has kind of gone to the back burner. because again we have to focus on the common humanity so as i said you uh, put the same incentive a same constraint in a system you get the same outcome so they incentivized you know like you say separate because they wanted to divide uh, what do you say the freedom movement because you know it's it's happening at the same time this muslim league is coming bengal is part- partitioning and this is happening in punjab at the same time and if you look at it you know like a lot of british states they always did this so you know like the british colonized so much of africa they will always take like a minority and you know like they get privilege and i don't say like okay like maybe they t- took the opportunity by merit but the british would always do okay like these people are small you know they, we can get their loyalty and you know like they will not try to control it because you know they have been uh, there is a majority who will like steal from them so they played this divide and rule policy and the thing is in india we all already have our biases that's why i think there is a book by conquest and culture by thomas sowell he basically goes into like the colonization of africa by the british so you just read what they were doing in other countries you will understand what they were doing in india uh, ms has asked uh, are there any visuals of uh, desecration done to gold, uh, golden temple by khalistanis uh, they only talk about the government uh, did and keep showing tanks and such any stats i think any statistics on girls being kidnapped and uh, raped in the golden temple yes 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 i think shekhar gupta has done a story on baljit ko you know like this woman was uh, raped and uh, i i can't even say but just put shekhar gupta baljit ko and this was just a few months before uh, blue star so you will find it and if you look at when you talk about desecration so this happened in 84 the mistake of the government was there was no media so when they did in 88 by kps gill he got the media of the world put together because he was like you know these people would always put the blame so the world can see what they are doing so when you know he got this they were like this people uh, in the golden apple they that was it was in the news like it's not just news the what do you say newspapers of the world swedish american everybody because everybody was there they said they had defecated inside the sanctum sanctorum inside the sanctum and then the guy was like malkiyat singh ajnala you know he is like this he was said he pointed nobody knew he said he pointed towards akal takht and then human rights watch you know because human rights watch everybody was there the government had no idea then they basically dug the akal takht and 46 dead body were found from under the akal takht so this is like the spiritual desecration but i'll say something else there is another guy his name is amardeep singh and don't listen to him on history but what he has done is done fascinating ethnographic research so what he has done is in uh, on pakistan gurdwaras and there is documentaries and there are also his book so you know this pakistani gurdwaras were left untouched by sgpc so if you see in pakistani gurdwaras there are frescoes of ramayana of mahabharat everywhere so this is how our gurdwaras used to be now they have whitewashed everything like indian gurdwara like now this uh, isi has gone and uh, painted this mahabharat and ramayana inside our gurdwaras this is how we used to be so one is like uh, like uh, falsifying of history that is done and the other is desecration like uh, urinating defecating and you know what they have defecated this bowl where you serve the pr- prashad to people and that they had defecated and this guy who had defecated one of the biggest guys his name was karas singh thande if you google him you will find on 1984 terrorist tribute site like this this great warrior this great warrior had defecated inside the sanctum sanctorum of golden temple and just go to india india today archives and you will find everything Uh, proud bharatiya has asked uh, punichi how to deal with jihadi jihadi mindset people sach bol speak the truth and pay the cost for it and find meaning in it that's it uh, shweta ji has uh, said jab ye gaye vipran ki gadi maina karu fir inki parti dasam granth uh, rehani rahe uh, rehani rahe soye sikh mera o sahib mein uska chehra uh this is written by guru gobind singh sahib uh, does it direct to carry punch kakkar here nee nee the thing is again bhai okay maybe i go on a tangent but like for example what you understand is 
what i said is dasham granth is an omnibus right omnibus is like a different books together no what you want to do is explain things right so explain things there are many ways to explain things for example i talked to Ra- raja bishay you should not steal it's a command like the jewish command thou shall not steal right now there is another way to say why should you not steal then you know like uh, there is for example prophet muhammad he would explain it different like why it is bad so for example he is uh, he would say like uh, if you take interest on money for example there are 70 uh, parts to the sin and the smallest sin is like having sex with your mother or he will say for example why backbiting is bad is like backbiting is eating like the dead meat of your brother so it's trying to explain another way to explain is writing a narrative like you write a novel right and you say okay this is this character and this is this character and this character he basically tries to he steals and this is what he has to suffer so as a human being you understand that much better what is done so what guru gobind singh ji has written a lot of it is narrative and they just you know like pull it out and say to give you an example there is a line he says chhatriyo ka putu bamand ko na so again you know this anti brahmanism that they have started with this foolish this was picked up by bindranwala and he, he would repeat it everywhere he is such an idiot no maharaja rajit singh would give the biggest grant to the brahmins i'm not talking about other brahmins just the kashmiri brahmins they are 11 out of 36 or almost one third of the people who have contributed to guru granth sahib are kashmiri brahmins you know so he says shatri ko putu bamand ko now where is this coming from is basically chobis of ta like i said so when krishna avatar finishes and nara avatar starts like arjun so he makes arjun also avatar because he was creating kshatriyas to fight and of course you know we know from the gita as well this is kshatriya this is the dharma in that context he has said but you know he is telling a story and he writes there if you just read a couple of lines before ke like this is bhagavat katha and you know i don't want to create any other uh, other dharma or something i am just putting you know like putting in uh, lok bhasha so he is telling a story now you find a lot of stories you know like about uh, uh, women or you know like this thing and you know somebody cheats on his husband and you know like feeds so that means women should go out and cheat on their husband but again you they don't they know don't know any context and they just start uh, speaking this nonsense like i told you about you know like there the, uh, there uh, limited things that they say uh, like for example uh, you know like uh, teaser pant no again you know for example when mahabharat ends i i forgot it is shanti parv or anushasan parv right so vishnu sahasram or uh, shiv sahasram nam both come from this in the same chapter and when you are doing like uh, vishnu 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 is the greatest in the same chapter you say shiv 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 shiv, shiv is the greatest so our understanding again you are using a monotheistic lens ki who is higher this is higher uh, whose father bigger it is not the, it's in a certain context in that context vishnu is the greatest and he has all that attributes and at the same thing is this so it's you know theism but again you know like you have to have a certain level of acculturation certain intelligence certain manners to even engage with this people they have nothing they just like you know this pakistanis this khalistanis are like this you watch my words they have done everything like uh, you know you in uk like you know they did gang bust you put canada gang bust all jatse uh drug bust all jatse and you watch 5 years you will see like you had grooming gangs in uk you will have the same in in canada so you know what kind of things you know like uh, can you, do you think you can have a civilized conversation with them? my job is just to inform people what they have done and maybe you know like the people in the middle they decide for themselves like what is to be done and we should all work to speak the truth and to know where the poison is coming from uh sir i have a personal question do six uh, six people also have gotras like us uh, like hindus and of course Wait, okay. like what I said about uh, Guru. Uh, to give you an example, he uh, when uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji just in the talk I talked about, you know, he goes to Haryana, and that is still preserved. You uh, surprisingly, I found even a video of it. You know, this uh, family has preserved for hundreds of years. Maharaja Ranjit Singh's ancestors came, and you know, they sign it, and you can read it. And it's so wherever they go, they like for example, when Guru Tegh Bahadur goes, he say, "I am uh, Sodi Khatri from Kashab Gros." and guru gobind singh says he says i am sodi khatri from kashab goth our uh, deity is nana devi and Mar- this is everywhere okay 
सर एस सी एज आज टूडे अकल तखत जाथेदर गेव अ कॉल सिक्स टू अपटेन लाइसेंस वेपन बिकॉज इम्पेंडिंग टाइम इज टफ हाउ डू यू सी दिस स्टेटमेंट और इज दिस ऑल्सो क्यूरेटेड बाय भाई वीर सिंह i am just saying bhai this is like sgpc like you have set in motion you no know, like it's pakistan their entire thing is separate nation who you know create this conflict so their thing like pakistan is also this you think hypothetically never i mean it but do you think if you give to uh, kashmir all of kashmir to pakistan it will sit quiet pakistan is not a state it's a mindset and mindset is separate nation and conflicting nations and like this so sgpc is like this so what my case is nobody has understood because you know everybody has memory of aurangzeb and everybody thinks oh sikh gurus were great and everybody reverse them and you know we marry and especially the sikhs they say outside punjab were mainly khatris they like wow, what what great neighbors do they make they have no understanding that this sgpc is exactly like pakistan inside india and you know for example you must have seen this uh, kashmir files yes. you know whatever you saw in kashmir files you say anything you know like for example putting posters hindus leave otherwise we will not leave your women khalistani is did this you know like get people shot them uh, you know whoever will go there we will burn them alive whatever you saw in kashmir files we have already put on six seven handle and uh, you know if you go, if you search through that you will find it but you put me if you want to challenge you can put me anything that you thought uh, that was shocking and i show you like in 888 uh, late 80s early 90s khalistan did the same thing they were also like you know you can wear only this color like you know they were saying they closed down the hindi department in punjab they closed down they were like to saying to professors like you have to write their name in gurmukhi script so for example if you are signing a raj abhishek they will kill you they are like you know if you go to this dera if you go to maratha uh, matas jagrata if you celebrate you know hindu festival uh, we are going to burn you alive and they acted these things out like they acted this it was not to give you one example when you know so they would always capture people one time they were like you know release our people otherwise we will kill kps when kps gill came to power he said we have to set a debt rate and we are not going to peace so it's like we have to pay a cost we will not do it so he refused to release this people you know khalistani they killed 69 villagers of one place so this is what this khalistanis were doing right everything what you see like in uh, kashmir files khalistani this exact same in thing in punjab and if you actually look at data if we also put it you know from very respected uh, institute of sweden when Kash- uh, kashmir basically burst in 89 90 you look at the numbers there were more killings in punjab than kashmir it's just like in 92 there's uh, kps gill comes and he gets uh, like a, a, a free hand uh, free hand not just police can do anything but free from political interference and in 6 months 8 months he basically uh, uh, cleans up the entire problem otherwise punjab would have been exactly like kashmir or worse because punjab used to be worse than kashmir everything what was happening in kashmir was happening in punjab and on a bigger scale uh, proud bhartiya has asked uh, pune ji i live in punjab i don't know why here is so much anti nationalism no it's just like i i give you an example so there is a i forgot the name his name is he is a great guy I, i don't know his name is man quest for meaning there is a great book uh, victor, victor frankel victor frankel right and he is maybe one of the greatest people from the uh, from the 20th century right but he was picked up by the nazis right and that guy he was in nazi prison and everywhere was like hi hitler hi no he is a jew no he is suffering his family has been killed you know and he is like the smartest guy maybe i he has like 160 180 iq i don't know but one of the smartest guys and one of the most spiritually strong guys he writes in that book when everybody was saying hi hitler i had to use my entire force not to raise my hand and say hi hitler so you know we are social animals it's not you think we are rational people we get data and we we're not like this so what the crowd is doing around us that shapes us in a long way so this crowd especially in sgbc it is completely unchallenged we are the first people to challenging them you know and uh, thankfully you know nobody has released this for 100 years nobody checked or who checked uh, you know they didn't have the courage to speak in openly that five case is a fraud so we are doing it and is of course thankfully because there is internet they can't you get my neck i mean i'm living in america i'm not in india otherwise i wouldn't have said so we have a lot of privileges i'm not like you know rubbishing the contributions of others but this narrative has actually never been challenged the six seva is the first one to basically you know 
openly challenge and bring out the crimes of sdpc in khalistan well uh, swetha ji has uh, just uh, put uh, uh, sri aurobindo's quotation on uh, sikhism but i we don't have that much time i'll just read out the first line the sikh khalsa was an astonishingly original and novel creation and its face was turned not to the past but to the future okay thank you ma'am uh, ds has asked uh, do you believe that uh, the punjabi hindu exodus murders that occurred in the 1980s could occur uh, could occur again with the rise of khalistan no um, there are two things now again this punjabi hindus rajiv is saying nobody talks about it you know like we are stupid people because you know like history we don't study like what leads to what and we have the same thing again and again we done study like pakistan Pak- this same separate nationhood and nonsense lead to like genocide and they wanted to do the same in punjab now hindu exodus like nobody we from like you know again our team did it again more kashmiri you know we can't really compare because you know they almost entirely left more than 90% left and punjabi hindus were like a much larger portion of uh, uh, punjabi population but more in absolute numbers more hindus had to flee punjab than kashmiri pandits from kashmir so if you look from 1981 to 1991 census 2.5% population of hindus has fallen now if you look at the population of punjab was around that time about 20 million that means 5 lakh hindus that means half a million but there is also another side to it so when the terrorism is finished in 1993 so if you go to nine, the next census is 2001 that 2.5% comes up again which shows like the hindus at the ground they were at peace it was just like you know there was no rule of law sgpc had been unleashed and criminality and they were doing it it was not their neighbors who were oppressing them ordinary people on punjab they they didn't really have that much conflict it's the sgpc and then this criminal elements you know you can lynch people and go to sgpc and do anything in the name of religion that is basically and what gil kem was like these are criminals and i'm going to deal with them like criminals and th- then everything was all right and every most of them came back as well so yeah so there are both sides Mo- more hindu left but many a hindu came back back again as well so the hindus don't have problem with the sikhs but yes this sg this cancer pakistani cancer that we have in sgpc it is always playing religious politics and you know in the name of religion the government is also like a bit careful not to offend and you know they create this where there's law and order now anybody can go and like you know shoot anybody okay uh, rangnath uh, shukla ji has asked how uh, bhinder wale became hero among sikhs uh, though he created a solid ground for separatism no no and so that there are two things if you listen to my talk and my research this is basically the popular belief that you know bindran wala came and mrs gandhi miscalculated or something like that what my research is thing and of course and i'm sh- standing on the shoulders of giants like and gerald barrier and uh, uh, harjot obroy and uh, rajiv kapoor my thesis is this came in like early 1900s from the muslim league they were mimicking the behavior the tactics the demands everything of the muslim league so th- that is my thing now what you say about bindan wale there is a talk you know uh, bindan wale uh, about me like if you preen sani bindan wale there is a one hour talk and you know like in that i break down you know from he came in 78 in what he did in 78 what he did in 79 what he did in 80 like all these years every years like what he was doing so you know you can you can do that uh, i think that would help uh, shweta ji has uh, said are uh, any true facts about banda singh bahadur he was a yogi and tantric before meeting guru gobind singh sahib and sir one thing i have also noticed uh, the martial arts part the sikh martial arts and the weapons the weapons were already present in the hindu deities we see uh, uh, that shastra what you say in uh, punjabi and uh, the martial arts also the sikh martial arts that's also a similarities with our hindu martial arts and so so again you know i i'll answer you like again you know so my idea is not to give you facts but you know like bring something that excites you so things you made like uh, banda bahadur weapons no you know so you see like there was nothing of panch kakar there was always of panch hathiyar and of course it makes sense bhai like you have to fight you have to be ready so you need weapons what are what are you going to do with the comb like this is nonsense what are you going to do with the kada so the thing is guru talk about five hathiyar so i have his letter from 1702 where he says come to me with five weapons then i have a letter from banda singh bahadur in 1710 he says come to me with five weapons then in 1810 you know there's a british colonel his name was malcolm 
he comes to india and he gets this scholar also from kolkata and you know he writes a sketch of the books it's very interesting and he says again panch hathiyar five weapons and when he writes five weapons he made some note and goes there is like these weapons and all this worship this comes from durga yes so sir. this is a shak parampara and again, you know uh, so i think i answered so again you know this entire history is fraud i am not saying you know some undergraduate of this is fraud they are like i don't know what to say they are shankaracharya of this modern psychology is veer singh and what i have told you like i don't know like uh, when i read this i was like man can a really a human being can be so depraved like i i couldn't believe it nobody knows it but i am seeing with evidence this is what veer singh has done he has taken a very important historical document and raped it he has like basically changed the words he has removed portion he doesn't like and he has put what he wants and his books are basically taught to scholars to teach other people about sikh history and like this is the level of depravity depravity is what they have done to our scriptures uh, nss said uh, sir a confusion what i have understood is that there is no sikh religion there is either hindu or khalistani is it correct hey, what do you mean by bhai we are not a concept dharma is not mazhab like our civilization is knowledge based so they, wherever you get a knowledge from you go and there of course you know like uh, fundamental teachings and you know like uh, an example that you try to do it so for example gurbani like what is special about it it is like uh, advaita knowledge but it is composed in music so if you go to a sikh temple it's sung in ragas like even if you don't you know that music does something on its own on you so you become more open to that the uh, if you my understanding of guru nanak is so for example is not guru nanak was some prophet ki i have some knowledge and i'm going to go to hitan and convert if you look at his travels so what makes him special is you know like there are great saints so you know like you don't find many travelers okay you have one traveler like uh, for example buddha so he basically wanders just in bihar so bihar is basically buddha he does no we have adi shankaracharya he is like the one of the greatest but he goes basically to india what guru nanak does is he basically travels much of the world that was known at the time right and if you look at it he's always going not just to you know like uh, heathen or people where have no civilization like he is not going to brampton or surrey in where people have no knowledge and trying to give them uh, what do you say civilize them so what guru nanak is always doing he is going to iits and mits he is going to the most uh, highest place of learning at that time and engaging so he is a seeker himself so he for example he says uh, uh, che gar che gur che updesh gur gur eko rupane so there are six school of thought in hindu thought and he says there are six schools and you know there are six gurus and all of them are right they are just like different forms of it so he is trying to explore so what i have understood his life philosophy is in your culture something becomes outdated leave it in every culture there is something to learn accept it so this is a timeless philosophy there is no dogma in it. so that is that, that is the example and fundamental teachings that are timeless this concept of mazhab with like blasphemy and dogma and you know this is created and now the time starts now this is just like the uh, like not just abrahamic the worst attribute of abrahamic like for example the caste was the worst attribute of our, our civilization so they have picked up the worst aspect of their civilization and made it fundamental to like our, our culture which uh, nothing can be worse than that subhanjati mitra has asked is there any organization that can challenge sgpc well right now we are the only one uh, thankfully or uh, regretfully uh, we are the only one and you know like <laughs> they have really like hit like now I have nothing to lose, and I think you know we will not stop because they are not going to let. So this is a fight to the end, and you know whatever they have to do, they can do. But you know, like with the Guru's teachings and truth and logos by my side, this is going to be like fight to the end. Whatever they can do, they have tried everything, and you must have heard also like you know like now death threats are going into like the, even in articles or something like that what they are doing. But now it's just like this, you know, like. Uh, whatever it is so we are there and i'm sure you know like people will will come on itself and also like start speaking because you know this live to give you an example like for example this core thing last thing and maybe so for example this this such an artificial creation like i said you know guru's wife is devi now when bhagat singh recently there was bhagat singh we were celebrating him no look at bhagat singh this this case went to court right so bhagat singh mother's name is there bhagat singh name is mother name is vidyavati devi So he is a jarsing, he is a revolutionary. 
and again khalistani if you go on wikipedia they are again making way with devati core they are again you know like that's how they falsify history now the person who testified who gave uh, testimony against him his name was ujjal singh ujjal singh was the uh, chacha or the uncle of the celebrated author kushwant singh right so he gave their testimony in court his mother's name is also there she is also a devi so now we have two six one from a farmer family one from a industrial family one is a loyalist one is a revolutionary both in our devis now they say guru has said to create core which has nothing existed and i ask any punjabi any sikh you know you do this example at home you go to the oldest member alive in your family right and you ask that person who is the oldest female that he remembers dead or alive if that woman was born before 1915 her, her name would have devi not core so you know that's how they created separate name separate rituals because nothing like this existed and everybody believed in the te- teachings of this you know like again you know even though it's in pakistan like baba bulesha so you know say some people say all sufis are like baba bulesha was you know he spoke for the gurus against the aurangzeb in that time and in living there like gurus left baja uh, and they came you know to hills of shivalik to fight he was living in punjab and multan where he said this so he said guru tegh bahadur as gazi and he said aurangzeb as tyrant so if you now if somebody says oh like baba bulle shah you are a sikh you can't uh, you can't uh, read his poetry you can't read his book you you can't have faith in him what kind of nonsense is this like baba bulle shah or waris shah they are part of our punjabi inheritance but that's like if you ask any punjabi hindu the gurus are the part of you know like uh, what do you say their punjabi inheritance and that's why they can't let them go and that's why it's an unequal fight because this khalistan is an sgpc they take uh, no respect in insulting the hindu gods and goddesses but the punjabi hindus cannot turn back and insult the sikh gurus because for them they are equally reverential again you know like you read this book by kapoor like how hindus like really for they were getting nothing but they were like how can you take this from us that we are sikhs you know we are sanatanis but we have always revered them we respect them they are they are as much as ours you know we in our home how can you how can you decide we are not it's a, it's like a personal thing between god right even islam says that so what they have created is like the worst version of wahhabism because they also think your conversion is between like you and your god and something like that. they are saying no we are going to define so this is basically takfir you know again you know to tell people kafir and all this thing this is what they have started and this is what they have done call kafir 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 okay just uh, one question has come uh, khalistan is always mention one quote from guru nanak naham naham musliman why should uh, why would have guru mention this bhai it is not he said na koi hindu na koi musliman but right i think guru arjan says is you know like uh, i don't believe in this and again you know you go like uh, 20 pages earlier bhagat kabir had said the same thing bhai you read it na it's in the same rag again you know you there is a, what do you say there is a talk by me with on jaipur dialogues i think one of the first ones and i gave like you know i took this statement and i just showed like it's the same to same you know maybe in a, one or two word here and there what bhagat kabir has said and bhagat kabir has come like what do you say centuries before guru nanak so what, what do you say like bhagat kabir like you know people who believe in bhagat they are another religion they have nothing to do with the civilization what they are trying to do or all bhakti saints are trying to do is go out of this organized religion and go for this inner spirituality that is what all saints have what is special about it bhai if you do like this you you will find this in namdev bani you will find this in jaydev bani you will find this in you will find this in meera like everybody has said this in some way or another but what you are saying hindu muslim this is exactly what kabir ji has said.